News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And I'm really excited to do today's video tutorial. Uh, we're going to be going over the new update to the image shapes widget found at museforyoushop.com. Um, it is now image shapes with morph. So you can morph between two shapes. Uh, so it's a really fun widget. So here I'm on the preview page. And when I hover over the shape, it morphs into another shape, uh, just like that. Okay, and I have a few more examples. So you can morph on load, on hover, on click, or on scroll. Here's, a, here's another example of this shape morphing into a seven. All of the uh, morph shapes here are morphing on hover. So this one morphs into an abstract, abstract shape. Uh, you can set the speed of the morph as well. Uh, you can set the morph easing. There's various easing options. And this is just another morph, morphs from one shape to another. Here we have another morph, uh, it's an abstract shape. Looks good. And you can have multiple morphing image shapes on one page, and you can create shapes in Adobe Illustrator. So all the morphs on this preview page, they have the same speed and easing, and they all morph on hover. But I will go over all of the other widget options um, to showcase how to really customize the morphs uh, for your own website. All right, so here I'll go back to the shop. And here for the morphing widgets, you can morph between two shapes. You can morph on load, on hover, on click, or on scroll. You can have another element trigger the morph. You can set the speed of the morph, set a delay to the morph, repeat the morph, and set the morph easing. Uh, pretty much what I went over in the preview page. Uh, here are a few of the widget options. The change log, uh, this video will be right here. And we have the community section as well. And the first preview here, uh, this is the image shapes without the morph effect, so you can just add image shapes to your website as well, um, or you can use the morph widgets to morph between two shapes. So I'll go ahead and get started on how to use the widgets, the new morphing widgets in Adobe Muse. So here I have a blank website in Adobe Muse. So when you first download the widget, whether you purchased individually from the shop or whether you purchased uh, the subscription, uh, you can download the widget and it comes in a zip file. So you simply extract the zip file and then double click the .mulip file that's in the folder that was unzipped and it will install directly into the library panel. Okay, so here I'm gonna to go to the library panel here to the right and if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. Okay, so I'll open up the library panel and here I'll type in image shapes. So now we have four different widgets for the image shapes. We have the image shapes morph, which morphs between two shapes we have the image shapes morph at first on scroll. Uh, this is only needed if you're triggering the morph on scroll. Um, you can add the add first to the top of your Adobe Muse website. Uh, then we have the image shapes morph with trigger. So you can have another element trigger the morph. So when the user interacts with that other element, the, mor the morph will occur. Um, and then we have the, the image shapes widget, which is the, the first release where you can just have an image within a shape. Um, and this does have a few updates as well, which I'll go over in this video tutorial. So I'll go ahead and start with the image shapes morph. So I'll click, hold and drag and place into Adobe Muse. And here we have the widget. So right away, as soon as you drag and drop into Adobe Muse um, and you preview a page in the browser and you hover, um, it immediately morphs. Um, we can see in the background, it doesn't have an image. It's kind of saying, hey, um, I need an image in the background here. Um, but the morph does occur. So it works as soon as you dra drag and drop into Adobe Muse. So I'll go over the widget options. So here we have the instance number. So every new uh, image shape that's on the page, you'll wanna give it a unique instance number. Uh, that way the different image shapes don't inherit properties from other image shapes. And here we can add the image. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just click add file and I'll add an image. So let me close the library panel here. So now I'll go into the morph settings. So here we have select morph start. So you can have the morph start on load, on hover, on click, or on scroll. So initially it's set to on hover. So that's why when I first previewed and I hovered over the shape, it morphed into the other shape. 
Um, and then here we have the, re the duration of the morph. So, you know, you can set the morph to a higher duration or a lower duration. So if I were to set it to something like three seconds, it would take longer for shape one to morph into shape two. And then you can have a start delay to the morph. Uh, this is more for on load. So let, let's say you have the morph playing automatically. You can set a start delay to the morph. Uh, you can have the morph repeat. You can set a repeat delay and you can change the easing option for the morph. So here we have the different easing options. And if you've worked with the Muse Motion and the Muse Motion 2 widget, these options will be familiar to you uh, because the morph is using the Greensock animation platform yeah, from Greensock or GSAP. Uh, so these options will be familiar to you. These easing options are from the Greensock animation platform. All right, and then we have yo-yo and repeat on hover. And I'll showcase this in a second. It makes more sense when uh, I showcase it. So let's go ahead and play with these options a little bit. So we have the morph start on hover. Let's go ahead and change it to on load. So if I change it to on load and I preview, the morph will start right away and it'll only play forward. Uh, but let's say I wanted it to play forward and then back. What I would do is set the, the repeat to one. So it'll play forward and because I have yo-yo checked, it'll play backwards. So now I'll go to file preview page and browser. So it'll play forward and then back, uh, just like that. Okay, and if I were to uncheck yo-yo, it would kind of have this jittery effect where it would start over, uh, which isn't the smoothest effect. So I do like the yo-yo option checked. So it plays and then it plays again from the beginning. So with yo-yo selected, you can have it play forward and then back. Okay, just like that. Okay, and you can have it infinitely repeat. Um, so if I, in the repeat option, if I were to say negative one, the morph would infinitely repeat. So here I'll go to file, preview page and browser, and it'll play forward and back, forward and back. It'll just infinitely repeat. So that could be an interesting effect if you if you want uh, morphs to be infinitely repeating on the page. Okay, so that's the on load options. If you were to set the repeat delay, so if I were to say something like one second, it would take one second for it to morph forward and one second before it started morphing backwards. So there it morphs forward, one second, morphs backward, one second, morphs forward. So it just waits one second before going back into the morph. So you do have a lot of control and a lot of options on how you want the morph to occur. Uh, so here I'll select on click. So we'll go on to the next option and I'll just set the repeat to zero and the repeat delay to zero. Uh, duration we'll leave at one and I'll go ahead and preview. So I click, it morphs, I click again, it morphs back. So you can click as many times as you want. It'll morph forward, click again, and it'll morph back. Okay, so that's it for the click. You can morph forward and click again and morph back. And then I'll select the on scroll option. So here I'll select on scroll. And if I do want the morph to start on scroll, I wanna bring in the at first on scroll widget. So here I'm gonna type in image shapes and I'll bring in the image shapes morph at first on scroll. So you do need this widget for the morph to trigger on scroll. Okay, and then actually let me zoom in here. If I open the widget options, we have the on scroll option. So here it's gonna start the, the trigger the morph when it's fully in, in the viewport, which is fully in the browser window, and it's gonna stop when it fully exits the browser window. And we have some offset options here as well. So here it says enter a negative value to have the offset go into the viewport. So if I wanted the element to trigger when it's a little bit further in the viewport, rather than just starting right away when it's in the viewport, I would enter in a negative value in here from the offset from the top and the bottom. And offsets work best when partially entering into the viewport. So I would change this here to partially enter viewport. And here I would change this to partially exit viewport. Um, it would mostly be per for partially enter viewport. So you can have a little distance from the bottom or the top of the browser before the morph starts. And I have it set to play once, so it won't uh, start over if the user uh, scrolls the element off of or out of the browser window. So here I'll just add some space, uh, some page height, and let's go ahead and preview that. So I'll go file, preview page and browser. I'll scroll and the morph is triggered on scroll. And it just stays uh, just like that on scroll. Um, it doesn't morph again because I have it set to play once. But if I wanted it to repeat, I would just go into the on scroll options and uncheck play once. And now if I preview 
and I scroll, it morphs. If I go off the page, come back, it morphs again. So it'll just repeat the morph every time the element comes into the browser window. All right, so that's the on scroll options. You do want to add the image shapes morph add first on scroll to the top of your Adobe Muse website and the widget can just be placed right here. All right, so now let's get into the really fun part, which is creating the shapes. So by default, we just have the shape here. Um, it goes from this shape into a hexagon, I believe it's called, with uh, six sides. Uh, but now let's create some custom shapes. So here in the polygon point section, so we have the first polygon point, which is the first shape, and we have the second polygon points. So with this update to the image shapes widget, uh, you no longer want the percentage symbol next to the numbers. So I'll showcase how to remove the percentage symbols from the clip path maker website. Um, so yeah, this is shape one and this, this is shape two. And then here, if you click here on the clip path maker, um, it'll take us to the clip path maker website and you can create your custom shapes. So one thing I do recommend when creating the shapes is that both shapes have the same number of points. So for instance, if I were to take uh, this heptagon here, which has seven points. Um, so here I have the shape and I'm gonna go ahead and paste these polygon points right down here into the widget. Yeah, so after you create the shape, the polygon points are right down here and you can copy these numbers. So here I'll hit Command C to copy. So with those numbers copied, I'm gonna open up text edit. Uh, you can open up any word processing program. And the first thing I'm gonna do here in text edit is go to format and say, make plain text. Cause we don't want the numbers to inherit any of the styling properties that were copied from the website here. So now I can paste those numbers in there and we can see it has the percentage percentage symbols next to the numbers. I want to remove those. So I'm gonna go to edit, find, find and replace. And here in the find option, I'm gonna enter in the percentage symbol and the replace I'm gonna leave blank and then I'm gonna select all so it just deletes the percentage symbol. So there it removed all the percentage symbols. So now I can copy these numbers and I can go into the widget and I'll actually move the widget up here and we're gonna change it to on hover. Okay, so I'll open the widget options. I'll go to polygon points and I'll paste those numbers right in there. So now we can see the image shape becomes a hexagon. So I can go to preview and if I hover, uh, it turns from a hexagon into a, uh, a heptagon into a hexagon. So we notice something interesting. It kind of clips one side because the hexagon has six, um, the heptagon has seven points and the hexagon only has six. So this is why you want to make sure that both shapes have the same number of points. Um, so that was the first shape. So we changed the first shape. So let's go back into Clippy. And now with this shape selected, now you can just move these points and create a unique shape from those points. Um, and this will ensure that both shapes have the same number of points and it'll allow for a smooth morph. So here I have a shape like this. So now again, I can copy the polygon points. So I'll hit Command C to copy, go back into text edit, paste right in there. Again, the numbers have the percentage symbol uh, because I've already entered in all the information for find and replace. I can just click on all and it deletes the percentage symbol. So here I can hit Command C to copy, go into the widget, and select polygon points and paste that shape in the second poly polygon points. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and preview. And if I hover, it turns into that second shape, just like that. Looks good. So one thing you wanna be aware of when creating your shape in Clippy is that these points control the morph. So if this red point here was somewhere down here initially, and I place it up here, uh, it's going to affect the morph because this point is going to go from here to up here. So you just want to be aware of that when creating the second shape. Um, the points do kind of control how the morph moves um, from shape one to shape two. So that's basically it on how to copy the polygon points from the uh, Clip Pathmaker website. Um, you do have some preset shapes here, so you can kind of select a preset shape, copy the polygon points, paste it into the first shape, and then just work um, with moving the points to create the second shape. Or you can customize the first shape and the second shape as well. So I can start with the first shape, you know, however I'd like, and then change it for the second shape as well. All right, so that's how to copy the polygon points from the Clip Pathmaker website. 
So now let's create the, the polygon points in Adobe Illustrator. So within the widget options, there's this creating shape in Adobe Illustrator. And here I go through on how to create the shape. Uh, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to do it uh, here in this tutorial. So here I'll open up Adobe Illustrator. Here I'll click on create new to create a new artboard. And for the artboard, you want it to be 100 pixels in width and 100 pixels in height. So you can just enter 100 and 100 and then click on create. So here I have my 100 by 100 artboard. And the first thing I want to do here is select the pen tool so I can create my paths and create a shape out of the paths. So here I'll click on uh, the bottom here to start my first path and I'll just create a random shape. So when you're creating the shape, you want to use most of the artboard. So the shape fills the image shape widget. So I'm just creating a random shape and there I have my shape. Uh, just an abstract shape there, not really going for much, but just to kind of demonstrate uh, creating the shape in Adobe Illustrator. So after the shape has been created, we're gonna go to File, Export, Export As, and we're not actually gonna uh, save the shape. We're gonna go right down here where it says Format, and we're gonna select SVG, which is the last one here. So here I'll select SVG, and you wanna make sure you use Artboards is not checked, and then here I'll click on export. Okay, so you don't really have to worry about these options here. The only thing you wanna do uh, when this window is open is click on show code. Okay, and then here we have the code for the shape and you wanna look for the words polygon points. So right here we can see it says polygon points and you wanna copy the points uh, within the quotes. So right after polygon points, uh, we have these numbers in quotes. So I'll select the numbers uh, after the first uh, quotation marks and right before the last quotation marks. So here I'll hit Command-C to copy. I'll go back into Muse, and for the polygon points, I'll paste those points right in there. And there I have that shape uh, with the image inside of it. So here I'll go back into Illustrator, I'll click Cancel here, and I'll just move these points. So I'll select the Direct Selection tool so I can select those points and move them around. So here I'm in the Adobe Illustrator toolbar. So here I'll just move these points around. So I'll select this point and I can just move the points around just like that. Something, something like that. Um, so there we go. So there we have a new shape. Um, just kind of try to make something a little bit interesting here. All right, so something like that. Um, yeah, it's just an abstract shape. So again, I'll go to File, Export, Export As, and here in the Format option, I'll say SVG. Make sure Use Artboards is not checked, and click Export, click on Show Code, and we'll copy the polygon points uh, for this shape here. So just like that, we wanna highlight the polygon points, hit Command-C to copy, go back into Muse, and then I'll paste that for the second polygon points. So that'll be the second second shape. All right, so now I'll preview. And when I hover over, it turns into that second shape. So these shapes are just really abstract. Um, to, I wasn't really going for much when I created them, but just to demonstrate how to copy the polygon points from Adobe Illustrator. Um, so it is noted here in the creating shape in Adobe Illustrator, all those uh, steps I just went over are right here in this uh, section. Okay, so I've gone over all the widget options for the image shapes morph. Um, there are some reference references here. So each new image must have a unique instance number to have the morph play forward and, they, and then back, enable the yo-yo option and set the repeat option to one. To have the morph infinitely repeat, set the repeat option to negative one. All right, and then also in the polygon points, um, here's the Clip Pathmaker website. And here it says, after the polygon points from the Clip Pathmaker website are copied, remove the percent symbol from the numbers and then paste into the polygon points section. And then recommended to have the same number of points for both polygon shapes for a smooth morph. All right, so now uh, that we've gone over all the widget options, let's go over the image shapes morph with trigger. So you can have an element on your Adobe Muse website trigger the morph. Okay, so I'll just delete this here and then I'll go to image shapes I'll type in image shapes in the library panel and we'll bring in the image image shapes morph with trigger. 
So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse and I'll open the widget options. So all the widget options are the same, except we have this trigger option. So here it says trigger graphic style name. So this is the graphic style name we'll be applying to the element we want to trigger the, the morph. So here I'll add an image. So I'll select add file and just add an image. Okay, so now with the image added, I'll go ahead and preview just to showcase. So if I hover over this image shape, nothing happens because it's looking for an element to trigger the morph. So here what I'll do is I'll create a shape uh, with the rectangle tool. I'll fill the shape with a color, something like that. And there we have this element. So what I want to do with the shape is assign the graphic style name trigger one, which is in the widget here. Uh, trigger one, I want to apply it to this element so that when I interact with this element, the morph will be triggered. So here I'll select the element and I'll zoom in here and I'll go to the graphic styles panel here to the right. If you don't see the graphic styles panel, you can go to window and click on graphic styles. And with the element selected, I'll click on this icon here and it creates a new graphic style called style. I'll double click here on style and I'll rename the graphic style name or the graphic style to trigger one because that's the name that's in the widget. So now when I interact with this element, the morph will be triggered. So I'll preview and if I hover over, we can see the morph is triggered. So when I interact with this element, that's when it triggers the morph. If I try to interact with the image shape here, it doesn't do anything. But if I do this, it triggers the morph. So this is really useful for on hover and on click. So if I select on click, when I click on this element, the morph will be triggered. So I'll click and the morph is triggered. Looks good. All right, so that is the trigger widget. You can have uh, other elements on the website trigger the morph. Okay, so now I'll go over a few other options. Um, so I'll bring in the image shapes widget, which is just the image shapes. And I'll showcase the, re the new resize options. So here I'll click, hold and drag and place into Adobe Muse. So now with the latest update, the shape retains its aspect ratio. Um, so anytime you try to make the widget container larger, um, it just stays a perfect square so that the shape doesn't get distorted. Um, so you can set it to responsive, to be responsive in width, responsive in width and height, and stretch to browser width. Uh, but the image and the image shape will always be a perfect square. So it's best to showcase the responsive options with another element on the website. So here I'll create another element and just fill, fill it with a color and place the element right here. And I'll fill the image shape with an image. Okay. And this applies to the morph uh, image shapes as well. So there we have the image shape and we have the, the element. So if I were to select the image shape and I go to resize and I say responsive width, we're going to notice what happens. I'll preview in the browser. And if I resize, we can see the image shape gets smaller because it's retaining its aspect ratio. Um, so it does become responsive in width and height but we notice that there's this big gap in between this element and the image shape here, just like that. So it looks good because it's retaining its aspect ratio and just it's just getting smaller and the shape isn't getting distorted, but we have this big gap right in here. If we didn't want that gap, we just select the widget and in the resize option, just say responsive width and height. So I'll go ahead and preview. And now if I resize, we can see that this shape stays relative to the image shape as it's as it's resizing. So we don't have that big gap. So I do like having the responsive width and height option selected for the image shape. Um, if I did want a responsive width and height website where elements stay together as the website resizes. So this element stays relative uh, to the image shape as it's resizing. Um, so just wanted to showcase that there. If you did say stretch to browser width in the resize option, it would just become a really large image shape uh, because again, it's retaining its aspect ratio. So it changes in width and height and you have this large image shape. Okay, so the same is applied for the image shapes with morph. Um, so just wanted to showcase that there. And one last thing I'll showcase is adding a background image to the image shape. So I'm gonna bring in the image shapes widget with morph. So I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse. I'll add a file. And one really interesting thing is that you can add an image to the widget container. So I'll make this a bit larger. And to add an image, I'll just go to fill, just like filling a rectangle with an image, just go to fill, add image. 
and I'll select the same image just for an interesting effect. I'll leave it at the original size and we'll position it in the center there to see how it looks. All right, so that's kind of interesting. It's the image within the image and I'll preview. And when I hover, it morphs. So it's just kind of an interesting effect. Uh, you can move the image in the background a bit. So kind of get the desired effect. So when I hover, we have the image shape. Looks good. All right, or I could select any random image um, here. And I'll select uh, this image here. I can say scale to fill and position in the center. Okay, so come, it becomes kind of an abstract type of image, something like that. Okay, so I just wanted to showcase that. You can get really creative with the image shape and an image in the background. All right, or you could just have it blank and just have the image shape morphing. All right, looks good. Perfect, so I really like the effect. Um, it can make for a really interesting website. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, that's it. I've gone over all the widget options. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below. Uh, to gain access to the widget, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. The image shapes widget is right here. It's now image shapes with morph widget. So you can click here. Here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options. Uh, this video will be right here. Here's the community section if you had any questions about the widget. Uh, the preview pages, so we have the first preview page with just the image shapes, and then we have the preview page with morphing. So you can take a look there and take a look at all the morphs here on the preview page. All right, looks good. Perfect. Okay, looks good. So that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.